This online lesson on William Shakespeare's 1606 play, Macbeth, will deal with the figure of Macbeth as a historical character as well as a literary character. To begin with, it's important to understand that William Shakespeare's character, Macbeth, is not entirely of his own invention. He had taken the concept and the conception of Macbeth from 11th century medieval Scottish history, which he had read from books and chronicle histories by historians like Hollinshed, Fabian, and Stowe. Specifically, in Hollinshed, Macbeth is represented as a wise ruler who is able to successfully rule Scotland for a number of years and his gaining of the position of a ruler is not contested and therefore Macbeth is not seen quite as a usurper in Hollinshed. In Shakespeare's play, however, there is a lot of debate regarding the way in which Macbeth gains power. There is a question, for example, as to whether he deserves the power that he gets. Is he able to successfully continue in the power that he gets? And finally, what is the outcome of the power that he has taken from others? Shakespeare, importantly, does not take sides in the representation of Macbeth. He does not consider Macbeth completely as a hero who has done the absolutely correct thing in killing Duncan and becoming the king of Scotland. Shakespeare also does not make Macbeth into a villain who has done something completely wrong in killing King Duncan and becoming the ruler of England. In fact, what William Shakespeare does is create a confusion between these two extreme ideas because a debate regarding these ideas were current during Shakespeare's time when he was writing this play around 1606. At this point of time, it is important to note that King James VI of Scotland or King James I of England, both being the same person, had become the ruler of England around 1603 and Shakespeare was writing Macbeth in 1606. So when James, when King James was the ruler and he had succeeded Queen Elizabeth I, there was a lot of debate regarding whether the ruling or the monarchical power of King James was justified and successful. Shakespeare, being an artist, could not outrightly condemn a ruler even if the ruler was tyrannical. Nor could Shakespeare, as an artist, completely glorify a ruler even though he was tyrannical. Therefore, Shakespeare felt that it was very important to give space to debates regarding kingship, to debates regarding the gaining and the sustenance of kingship, and also to debates regarding the killing of the king, which is regicide. Firstly, it's important to go over the characters in the play. Macbeth is presented as this extremely uh, ambitious general who is at the beginning of the play presented as an extremely brave person who has been able to successfully crush a rebellion against his king, namely King Duncan of Scotland. And he is hailed both by his king as well as by his fellow compeers that he is the most brave and the most noble of Scottish generals. Towards the end of the play, however, 
Macbeth, when he becomes the ruler, he gradually begins to take over power but is not quite sure how to sustain or how to keep this power intact. For example, when the witches come and meet both him and his friend Banquo on the heath, Macbeth becomes very tempted and very tensed by the witch's prediction that he will be named king hereafter. But when Banquo is given the information that Banquo's successors will become king, Banquo does not feel all tensed and all tempted. Which is to say that Shakespeare feels that there was a bit of temptation and there was a bit of desire within Macbeth to actually seize the throne. Which is to say that Shakespeare is hinting that there was a desire in Macbeth to take over a position which did not rightfully belong to him. Moreover, a little later in the play, Macbeth is also after he becomes king and he is confused uh, and, and he becomes very insecure as to his position. He feels that there are a number of people opposing him, namely Macduff and he goes to Macduff's castle to find him. And, uh, and on being unable to do so, he finds Macduff's wife and his young son and he kills both of them. Shakespeare here is therefore gradually highlighting the villainy of Macbeth, which is to say that Shakespeare is saying that this person who has become a ruler, maybe because of an ambition which he had, now does not quite deserve that position anymore because he is becoming a villain. Therefore, it's important that we understand not only who Macbeth is and what he represents, but we also understand the transitions in the figure of Macbeth. To then move on, there is the wife of Macbeth, Lady Macbeth, who is first seen as a loving wife who is very close to her husband and who listens to everything that her husband says. Gradually, she is represented as someone who becomes very ambitious. And Shakespeare here is representing female power, which is able to manipulate male power according to its own need. However, it is also important to realize that whatever Lady Macbeth is doing, if Lady Macbeth wants her husband to become king, we should remember that it is Lady Macbeth wanting her husband to become king. The position of the wife as an individual is not being upgraded in any way. She is continuing to be a supporter of her husband of the male power. Therefore, if Shakespeare is representing Lady Macbeth as a manipulator, we must note that she is manipulating for Macbeth's upgradation in the monarchical world and not her own. It's very important to remember this point because towards the end of the play, the kind of guilt that Lady Macbeth feels in having contrived this whole act of the murder of a king whom she almost looks up to as a father figure is something which destroys her and there her male counterpart or her husband is significantly not by her side. So if there is a female character who is manipulating her male counterpart, it is this female character who dies very alone and dies completely self-destroyed.